Alrighty, boys and girls, this is the Chapter 1 Test Study Guide. What I want you to do is pause the video, try to answer the questions, and when you think you have the answer, press play. I'll show you the answers, I'll explain what they are in detail. Um, if you get everything right, you can just go ahead and skip to the next question. If you had a little trouble, make sure you listen to my explanations. Here we go. Alrighty, so name the line that contains points D and B. Well, there's point D and B, and those points are on this line. We can name it as line DE, like so. Don't forget the line with the arrow. Also, remember, you can use the lowercase script letter as well, so we could call this line C. Your choice. Next, name two points that are coplanar with points G, B, and E. Well, there's G, B, and E. They're all on this plane right here. So we would say points D and H. They're the only two points remaining on that plane. Next, name the intersection of lines F and C. Well, there's F, there's C, and they intersect at point B. Okay, pause the video, press play when you think you have the answer. Okay, so here are the answers for this one. Now, for these questions, they tell you that P is between J and K. So what I recommend is draw a segment or line, J, K, put P somewhere between it. Now they tell you J, P is equal to 2X, P, K is equal to 7X, and the whole thing, J, K, is equal to 27. So you know that this part plus this part equals the whole line. So we have 2X plus the 7X equals the whole thing, which is 27. Now, we just solve 2x's and 7x, like terms, combined to 9x. 9x equals 27. Divide both sides by the coefficient, 9. We end up with x equals 3. For this one, we set it up almost identical, except for this time, jp is 3y plus 1, and pk is 12y minus 4. And together, they equal 75. So the 3y plus 1 plus 12y minus 4 equals 75. 3y and 12y make 15y. 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3. I add 3 to both sides to get rid of this. Now I have 15y equals 78. Divide both sides by 15 and I get y equals 5.2. Okay, press play when you think you have the answers. Alrighty, here we go. Now first we can name a line by the script lowercase letter that names it, line R. We can name it by the points, line AB. We can do that in reverse, line BA. We can also use the notation, writing the two points, with the picture of a line above it. Make sure you have arrows on both ends. If an arrow is just on one end, it's a ray. If there's no arrows, it's a segment. So we have line AB, line BA. Here, for the angle, I can name an angle by the name inscribed on the inside of the angle, the interior, angle 2. I can name it by the vertex, angle Y. I can name it using the three letters, one from a side, then vertex, then side. So in this case, angle XYZ, and the reverse of that, angle ZYX. Notice the vertex has to be in the middle. Now, for the sides, I start with the vertex and go to a point on each of the rays for both sides of the angle. So ray yx or ray yz, side 1, side 2. Remember, we start with the vertex, the arrow is on the right, just like in the picture. Okay, try these two with distance formula. Press play when you're ready. Okay, so with this one, don't forget to label x1, y1, x2, y2 and your formula is the square root of the absolute value x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. We fill in the values and 7 minus a negative, remember it's the same thing as adding, so we end up with 10 squared plus 12 squared, it's 100 plus 144, we end up with square root 244. Now for this one, when we do the same thing, don't forget negative 7 minus a negative 1, that's the same thing as negative 7 plus 1, which would be negative 6, absolute value of negative 6 is going to be positive 6. So we end up with square root of 64 plus 36, 
64 plus 36 is 100. Now, since this is a perfect square, I do want you to go ahead and simplify that down to 10. Don't just leave it as square root 100. Alrighty, go ahead and try and find the midpoint of each of those pairs. Alrighty, so remember for midpoint, what you're going to do is you're going to add the two x coordinates and divide by two and add the two y coordinates and divide by two. For the first one, you can see seven comma ten is our answer. Now for this one, don't forget a negative plus a negative is still going to remain a negative. Now the 32 divided by two, you have to simplify. This fraction right here, since it becomes a decimal, I'll take it either way. You can either leave it as negative 13 over 2, or you could write the answer like this, 16 comma negative 6.5. I'll take that one either way. All right, give these three a shot. Press play when you're ready. All right, we have two angles that share a common side and vertex. That would be adjacent angles. These ones, not only are the adjacent angles, but the non-common side is opposite rays. In other words, they're on a line. That's a linear pair. Two opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. These are vertical angles. Don't forget, vertical angles are congruent. So if angle one was 50 degrees, angle two would be 50 degrees. Alrighty, try to solve for x in both of these. Alrighty, so right here you can tell by this box that we have a 90 degree angle. So that means that these two parts together have to add up to 90 degrees. So 60 plus 2x equals 90. We go ahead and solve and we end up with 15 equals x. Here we have vertical angles. Remember vertical angles are congruent, so 36 degrees equals 3x. So all we do is divide by the coefficient and find out that x equals 12. Alrighty, go ahead and classify these two. Press play when you think you're ready. Alrighty, so this triangle right here, you see that all of the angles are the same, as well as all the sides, the segments there. So we call that equiangular and equilateral. Also, since there's no um, easy way to think of it, is there's nothing dented in, we also say this is convex. So equiangular, equilateral, convex, that makes it regular. Um, another way to think of it too is if you extended these segments and turned them into lines, nothing would overlap um, on the interior, or nothing would cross over the interior of the shape. Now when we look at this shape, again you can see it looks like it's dented in here. So if we extended these segments, you can see that here and here they would cut right through the shape, so it's concave. If a shape is concave, no matter what, it's irregular. All right, we saved the best for last. Give this a shot. So this one I'm going to explain to you in parts. First thing you do is you want to try and graph all three of these points, and we did like so. Connecting the lines gives us this triangle. Now, when you look at the triangle, you can see that these two points are both on the y-axis. That makes them a straight line. So we know from here, b has a height of 7, and this is a height of 0. So we know the difference here is 7. This distance is going to be a 7. Right here, since these both have y values of 0, that means they're on the x-axis, and we know that point c is 5 to the right, and A is right there on the origin, we know the distance from here to here is going to be 5 units as well. So we can figure that out. So the last length we need to get in order to find the perimeter is from B to C. So that means we're going to use these two with distance formula. Okay, so distance formula shows us that this is square root 74. And we're not done yet. We need to find this perimeter. So I know it's going to be root 74 plus 7 plus 5. Well, square root of 74 is going to be this. Now, I said round to the nearest tenth, so let's take a look at this. We've got 8.6. Since the next number is 0, I'm just going to leave it as that. So, 8.6 plus 7 plus 5. And when we put those all together, 
we end up with about 20.6 units. Remember, if there's no measurement here, just write units if it's in the coordinate plane. Alrighty, if you know all this, you should be set for the test. Good job on going through the whole video, and study hard. See you in class.